Hi guys, and today I've got an absolute legend of the 1980s. This is the Audi Quattro or the Audi Ur Quattro as it's known now. That's, that's a small U and R before Quattro hyphenated. Why do they do that? Ur in German means original or another word is primordial, which conjures up images of powerful ancient creatures, which kind of fits with a car like this, particularly when you put it into the context of the WRC. More on that in a minute. Now, they had to differentiate it because the term quattro, which means four in Italian, basically denoted the fact that this car was the first one to get all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. Now, there were other road cars that had it, such as the Jensen Interceptor, but this one popularized the use of all-wheel drive in uh, road-going performance uh, passenger cars. Uh, and in fact, going forward, Audi put it on just about everything, especially their performance cars. So to differentiate this quattro from all the other quattros, this is the Ur quattro. So the Quattro was actually based on the Audi 80 Coupe, the B2 generation. It got the uh, flared out wheel arches, a very 80s thing. And of course, a front and rear independent suspension as well as the all wheel drive. Now, uh, the World Rallying Championship changed the rules for cars uh, at that time, allowing all wheel drive. And Audi entered this car and pretty much dominated and won for the next two years, whilst rivals like Peugeot and Lancia, Toyota, Ford, all caught up with their own all-wheel drive systems. Nonetheless, by 1985, Audi had clocked up 23 major rally wins. One of my favorite rally drivers, Michel Mouton, nearly won the WRC championship in 1982. Not the women's championship, but the actual full championship. She's the only woman to have got, she got to second, she's the only woman to have got that high. Personally, I still think she was robbed. Okay, I may have had a little bit of a crush on her. Anyway, this is not going to be a history lesson about the Audi Quattro. This car's exceptional achievements are on record in many different places. Just Google it. What this is about is me getting my second chance behind the wheel of an Audi Quattro. The first time was well over 10 years ago. Um, this car is a 1990 car. It's a 20 valve and it actually belongs to Audi who have lent it to me today. They made 11 and a half thousand of these cars up to 1991. So this is a rare privilege. So let's drive it, let's review it. Let's look at the practicality of it. This for example, let me show you. The handle to open that, there's a little lever just in the door well here. That opens that. Then you can open it from here and it's not a hatch, it's just a boot. Spacious though, about two suitcases, plus the wheel is in there as well. Well, that flips forward quite easily. Oh, okay, it's a bit of a, a small opening to get in here. <laughs> it's a bit of a small opening to get in, but actually, oh, once you're in, it's not bad actually. These seats not only look spacious, but they actually are. There's an ashtray back here, old cars, right? Don't smoke bad for you. There's a, a, a pocket, which is that's quite good. There's some stuff in there somewhere. <laughs> There's a pocket on each side, which is actually quite handy. A little tray type thing there. And, uh, you know, lap belts as well back here. Headroom's a little bit tight. I mean, it's a little bit tight, but I could probably do a short journey back here. I'm six foot two. This seat is set for me. So actually not bad. But what's the front like? Okay, watch me get out from here. Oh, ow. Oh, it might be better actually. Check it out, we are in the Audi Ur Quattro. You know, the car itself is famous for being a rally legend, of course, but it's also famous for a TV show, DCI Hunt. And the character drove it in a show called Ashes to Ashes. And his famous catchphrase in that was, uh, fire up the Quattro. And that's what we're gonna do now. By the way, check out a blank instrument panel. What's going on here? Digital dials, look at that, Knight Rider is home. Oh, look at that. It's got a fuel range thing as well. It's got even got a trip meter on this thing. Look, it's very sophisticated for its time. Now, just to touch on that, fire up the Quattro phrase again. Um, look it up. I'm not going to go into it because this is not a, pol a political broadcast. I know we're in election season at the moment here in the UK. But that was that whole, the car and that, and that catchphrase was used in the 2010 political election. Google it. It's very funny. So anyway, so in this car, we have this pod-like thing here, buttons down here. There's an ABS off button there. That's for off-roading. In fact, you've got a diff lock down here. So that's when you go rallying, plus voltmeter and, and oil temperature. We're not going rallying today, but we are going to drive it. It's very sophisticated. It's got the um, uh, electric mirrors on this side, and they do work. Check it out. See that? Uh, and electric windows as well. Um, uh, deep pockets, so very practical down there, and a pocket down there. Um, Oh, heating control, stereo, and five-speed gearbox, 
tray, handbrake, all the rest of it. One thing I will say, look at that, check that out. Don't know if you can make that out, but the steering is offset to the left and the pedals are off to the right. One thing good about the pedals is they're very well positioned. For you. So even in my boots, I can just about heel and throw in proper driving shoes, easy, no problem at all. Very spacious, very comfortable. Um, you know, even for my six foot two, um, the pillars are a little bit thicker than you would expect for an 80s car, but not claustrophobic, lots of light coming in and, and very, very comfortable as well. The car, in fact, it was designed to be comfortable. That was a key thing about it. And the engineer that worked on the car, I think George Bezinger, um, his task, his big dilemma was to how to take the four wheel drive system and make it comfortable and refined for a road car uh, rather than agricultural feeling, particularly at low speed. And he did that with some very clever solutions that he came up with um, at the time in order to figure that out. Now to go through the spec, uh, the car started off, um, they've given them codes now. So the first one was called the WR. It's a 2.1 liter inline five cylinder. They're all five cylinders, very silky smooth. That was a 10 valve with 210, uh, sorry, 210 pounds foot of torque and 197 brake horsepower, zero to 60 miles per hour, 7.1 seconds and 137 miles per hour top speed. The next one was a 2.2, they coded it MB at the same power and torque, um, but the torque came in slightly earlier. And then in 1989, there was this one, the 20 valve with uh, 220 brake horsepower, 200. 17 if you're being completely accurate capable of 143 miles per hour the rally car by the way had 302 brake horsepower talking of rally cars there was a sport quattro that came out in 85 and 86 and that was based on the short wheelbase rally car and uh, of course that was a beast um, and it's got these pumped out panels nostrils on the bonnet bigger intercooler bigger turbo uh, if you can find one of those the road going versions they're 150,000 pounds right up to 400,000 pounds for really good concourse uh, cars with provenance on them uh, regular cars you could probably pick up for between 15,000 pounds to 70,000 pounds um, you're probably looking at spending 40 45 for a good one this one is a, has got a lived-in fuel it's got a used patina about it you know it's not uh, pristine it's not immaculate it feels like a car that's been used and driven which is great because then that's what I'm doing today with the car and this one as I said belongs to Audi so uh, you know it, it, it's, it's a great car all around and I think the key thing about it was um, does it still drive I mean the great traction that it had the great handling that it had you know built the Audi's reputation for fast efficient solid but dependable cars with with enjoyable handling does it still do that well let's find that out so here we go oh my god the performance is fantastic you know they talk about turbo lag in these cars of the 80s but <laughs> sorry I've just encountered an S-Bend and it's just fantastic the grip on this thing is just extraordinary but yeah I mean I'm not really feeling the turbo lag honestly I mean yeah it's not like you know you can it's not straight away you know but so you have to wait till about you know three three to four I think it does like to rev it's very refined not too noisy not too coarse it all picks up incredible speed it's absolutely incredible very sure-footed the steering is very well weighted at low speed it's quite light not an issue but it gives you a lot of confidence I would say there's a lot of feedback coming through it but uh, enough though enough and um, you know they talk about understeer in this car and okay initial turn in understeer but honestly not really um, especially at, you know if you maybe if you're on a track or something but for here it's absolutely fine and um, a little bit of body roll a little bit of pitch but generally quite well composed quite stable <laughs> This car is just so much fun, you know. Very easy gear change, no problem at all. Like I said, you can heel and toe. Uh, definitely, the, the ratios are very precise. You know exactly what gear you're going to be in, even though it's a fifth gear. I've had it on the motorway fifth gear, no problem. Actually, cruises very well in it. You don't feel like you know, need another gear like you do in, in some cars. Um, very easy to change up and down, no problem at all. Uh, the brakes. Yeah, you need you need to wait a bit so you need to think about the braking like that's an old car thing you do need to think about the braking and just work them a little bit till you get down to the biting point and then they're fine but really it's this stuff what you're doing and you can just put the power on through the corner it's just incredible you know you don't feel like you're gonna get anywhere the limits near the limits of this car I'm um, certainly not you know on this road with my skill set in these conditions but you know you can be doing that the ride can be quite nuggety it picks up a lot of stuff um, you know and even here you know you're feeling it you're bouncing up and down like I said it does roll in pitch a little bit but generally it's not as bad as you think it's not jarring in any way you know so it's not off-putting it's just you know you know it just bounce and it, it smothers everything out but it does all right and um, you know so and, and the, in terms of the the, the, the car itself Yes, there's some rattles and squeaking, mostly from the seat actually, uh, which has probably been used quite a bit. Um, a few squeaks, a few rattles, 
look at that heel and toe turn in oh fantastic but generally it's pretty quiet pretty refined everything works on this car and you get the sense that you know despite the fact that you know you can feel that it's an old car and you can feel a few rattles and squeaks but at the same time you feel that it's pretty solid and you get the sense that it's going to stay solid and reliable and dependable oh man this car is absolutely a gem you know they, they say about cars like this sometimes or things you know 80s things that they don't meet your heroes but in this sense in this case no do meet your hero because it is absolutely fantastic and well well worth it so there you go there's our review of the uh, audi ur quattro i've absolutely loved this um i hope you've enjoyed the ride um i've enjoyed it i've enjoyed having this car all day um and frankly i'm not done with it yet so uh i'm gonna enjoy it some more uh, let us know what you think of the car review uh me anything else you'd like to talk about in the comments above below elsewhere and i uh, hope to see you in the next one meantime oh my god this is a great road and here we go wow i mean it's just amazing i mean it's just so satisfying and incredible incredibly quick for what it is and for how old it is oh my God. man i need a quattro in my life and so do you bye